How does a sandwich sound? I know, I'm Doug Kaufman, the Kaufman One Diet, right? Well, Abby's concocted bread for the Kaufman One Diet. No yeast, no wheat. Uh, it, toward the end of the show, it's a teaser. Got to stay for the whole show to watch this. My good friend, Dr. Darcy Brunk, is going to be here today. He does stem cell therapy. Folks, we all have stem cells, but by the time you're my age, one in two million your cells are stem cells. Cord blood, placental blood, has a lot of stem cells. Why wouldn't we use that? Okay, that's what he's going to be discussing today. Then I open the show with something brand new, Sense2 protein, mitochondrial Sense2 protein. What are those? What do they have to do with heart problems? All that and more on this, Know the Call. Today's show is brought to you by Achieve Vitality, whose mission it is to transform lives through simplicity and truth. For the past 45 years, I have dedicated my life and my whole career to finding the root cause of disease. And I now know with certainty that we must play a role in our own health care. I'm a self-care advocate, and you know what? Every time you change your diet for the better, exercise or swallow a nutritional supplement, so are you. Now, welcome to Know the Cause. You know, folks, I just uh, mentioned to one of the studio guys here, uh, this book, Fungal Bionics, Atherosclerosis, Hope at Last, was signed to me very nice man, Dr. Costantini, who was one of three scientists who wrote this book. This book is on clogging of the arteries, all due to fungus, 700 pages. So does fungus contribute to heart attacks, heart disease, cardiovascular decline? You bet it does, 100% it does. Do our doctors know that? I'm not so sure. I think most of them have no idea. This is not taught in medical training. Okay, so let's go with the question I start some of these shows with, and that is, fungus does that? Who is protecting your mitochondrial sense two proteins from contributing to a heart attack? Okay, I'm snickering there. That'll all make sense to you in the next five or six minutes, right? Who is contributing to your mitochondrial sense two protein from preventing a heart attack in you? Let's go down that aisle. Heart disease and heart attacks. Heart disease is the number one killer of we Americans. Every 36 seconds, another American dies of cardiovascular diseases. As we age, the risk elevates. Now, a research group in Florida believes it knows why older people are at an increased risk of heart attack. It sounds so simple. What didn't these doctors learn in their medical training? And you'll see where this research paper goes. Um, the, here's the headline on the paper. Significant reason older adults are at a greater risk of heart attack. Oh, good. I want to know this. This is important. A team of surgeons has found that insufficient levels of a protein sensin 2 is the reason older individuals are at a greater risk of having a heart attack, which indicates stabilizing the protein could be the answer to maintaining a healthy heart. I left that sentence in there for a reason. Sensin 2 is located inside the mitochondria of our cell. It plays a pivotal role and protecting the heart from stress, okay? Just came out. So your question automatically right now has to be, I'm a little bit lost, Doug. Sesson two, explain that to me a little bit more. And number two, what in the world does our cell look like with mitochondria? Did you guys have biology? You remember the human cell and the uh, cells uh, have a nucleus in the middle, and it contains our DNA, right? All of that. Here's what a human cell with a mitochondria, those two little things over to the right and then one on the left. It looks like a little uh, river flowing through the mountains there. Those are your mitochondria. These are the, the muscles, the energy source of your cells. Mitochondria inside human cell. And I thank Emays for that beautiful photograph. In the middle there, by the way, is all your genetic information. That's your nucleus with the RNA and DNA and so forth in it. I just wanted you to see that to have a platform for better understanding where the mitochondria are. Let's drop back. What they say in this book is that mycotoxins made by fungus annihilate, annihilate heart cells and other cells. Is that true? Well, let's keep going with our mitochondria. What might cause mitochondrial dysfunction and death? And I'm quoting this from the International Union of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology circa 2018, a couple of years ago. 
Mitochondria are the powerhouse of cells, which upon dysfunction may lead to several diseases. Mycotoxins are toxic secondary metabolite poisons from fungus, which are capable of causing disease and death in humans and animals. They also have a cytotoxic effect on our cells. That means they kill cells. Mycotoxin-mediated mitochondrial dysfunction may be related to several chronic diseases. By the way, heart disease is one of them, which also makes these mycotoxins considerable as lead compounds for inducing toxic effects in cells. So in other words, we induce cancer, we induce Alzheimer's, we induce diabetes with these mycotoxins in animals, not in humans. Doctors don't know that we humans are inducing these diseases with mycotoxins also. Just go with me here. Uncover the uncovering of Cessin II is of significant help to advance the development of new therapeutic treatments. Do you know what that means? What they're saying right there is, gosh, now that we've uncovered this, the mitochondria is annihilated and the population of these mitochondria go way down, these proteins, Cessin II, in the mitochondria. Um, new drugs would help. They're all excited. New drugs, yay! Okay. So often the goal, let me go back, so often the goal of research today isn't to understand cellular abnormalities that cause illness or death. Rather, the goal is to invent and patent new medication treatments for these abnormalities, okay? So understand what we're all about here at Know the Cause. Let's give you a briefing. Cessin 2 is located inside the mitochondria of human cells. Declining Cessin 2 increases your risk of a heart attack. Fungal poisons called mycotoxins can disrupt or kill human cells, complete with their Cessin 2 component, and following an antifungal program may help. So, for all of those of you who are in the aging population, I summarize. Shall we, concerned aging people, wait five to ten more years for new drugs to come out that might elevate mitochondrial levels of Cessin 2, thereby reducing our heart attack chance? Or shall we begin eating a diet that minimizes our exposure to fungal mycotoxins that might cause Cessin 2 reductions? I eat a low-carb diet. I take safe, inexpensive supplements like probiotics, vitamin D3, and omega-3 fatty acids that might help with fungal conditions. Oh, by the by, I feel so good. I hope that helps. Oh, friends, I'm sitting here making conversation with a guy I now consider a hero. You know, a year ago when I first met him, I wasn't sure how he'd fit in. Boy, has he fit in. I get phone calls from you guys. Dr. Darcy Brunk is here. My own producer, who I used to go to lunch with and he'd hobble up the stairs, is now jumping up the stairs. He's so much better thanks yes. to something called stem cells. I owe you a great debt of gratitude. Dr. Absolutely. Brown. Thank you for having me back. How, why stem cells? You're a doctor of chiropractic. Why yes. stem cells? Well, what happened is my story and my testimony. I actually was injured and hit by a car accident and got 70 miles an hour impact, herniations in my back and my neck, all the things I knew how to do, chiropractic, rehab, uh, diet, even did some steroid injections to try and get out of pain and it didn't work. And so I found that Infinity Therapy, which is a brand or a standard of the umbilical cord blood stem cell therapy, mm. flew to a doctor in Florida and received it myself and watched my life be transformed. For the first time in my career, regeneration. Yeah, I mean, this is such a dramatic story. A judge here in the little town that I live in, in Texas, uh, who's been a friend of mine for many years, called me one day and I said, how are your migraines? Didn't I tell you? Dr. Brunk did some kind of therapy on me, stem cells. And folks, we need to discuss stem cells in the interest of time here. Stem cells aren't what many of you think stem cells are. When I first heard what my friend had gone through, I thought, okay, aborted fetuses, no interest. Right. I thought $12,000, no interest. You know, I had all these visions, uh, autogenous where you take my blood and then inject my, no interest. So. This struck me. When yes. you sent me this, go over that article in Time Magazine. Well, Time Magazine, it was early in the millennium, actually. They found and they said, like it says here, that research suggests that stem cells could be one of the secrets to longer and stronger life. And that's why we say live younger and stronger for longer. You see, what happens here is regeneration 
is, is something that we're created to do already. Our body has the ability to repair itself. And if the key to healthy living, Doug, is healthy regeneration, then we need to be sure that we have a whole bunch of the tools or the building blocks that actually help us to regenerate in that stem cells. See, and then the question becomes, which cells? Because even an oldster like me has stem cells. So many doctors, Darcy, are telling right. their patients, look, we're going to take some of your blood, we'll purify it, and we'll put back in your stem cells. How many do I have? Four? You know, and my whole body right. is an old guy. This, uh, I love this graph. Yes. Teach us about it. So basically, as you age, your stem cell count decreases and declines. When you're born, as the graphic shows, one in 10,000 are stem cells. Mm. And our body uses those to rebuild. By the time we're late in our teenage years, it's one in 100,000. We went through 90%. But look what happens in the graphic. We get older, and it goes to one in 250, one in 400, then one in 2 million. So they're less pristine, less active. There's just not that many of them. That's why we're more prone to diseases, infections, and aging, is because that building block that miracle that God gave us to build our body in the first place is diminishing and declining and it's less pristine. But you know what's annoying? This gave a great idea a bad name because so many people, when, when do you get in pain? Well, when you're 50, 60, 70, 80 and so forth. And so well-meaning doctors, orthoped, uh, orthopedic doctors, chiropractors would say, look, let's try stem cells and we're going to try your own cell. But I only have a few stem cells. When you go with cord stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells, teach people what that is so they know the basis of your product, what you offer. So Doug, basically, simply put, there's power in the blood. The blood has all the constituents that it needs, and from that umbilical cord of that newborn, donated after birth, it has the ability to replicate, restore, rebuild, very robust and active, and it's attracted to the damage and inflammation. So the power that created you heals you. It's not generate, it's regenerate because your body's done it already. Okay, based on that, we're going to land it here. When we get back from this break, we'll continue with Dr. Brunk. You now know which stem cells uh, would work the best, right? Uh, newborn cord stem cells. Now the question becomes, am I my diagnosis? When we get back, we'll continue with Dr. Darcy Brunk. So many of you who have found your way into Dr. Uh, Brunk's, uh, beautiful, by the way, everybody's telling me, I haven't been to your office yet, but it's a beautiful office out here in Dallas, Texas, uh, have reported back to me, you know, I'm 20% better already. This is a week or two later. I'm 40%. Uh, you know, John is so much better. Other people that I know, like the judge who went through this a year ago, yeah. he's, he's all, he isn't getting his splitting migraine headaches. Uh, but they talk about the uniqueness of this, and they talk right. about always their diagnosis like that's mm -hmm. a, a baggage they put on their shoulder here's my diagnosis and i've got to right. live on opium-based pills or i've got to live on some anti-inflammatories and so forth you have addressed that uh so well with this graphic you are not your diagnosis talk about it. well basically here's what i see that's very fascinating and i want you to know as viewers don't accept what they're telling you don't just take that i have this diagnosis or I am that diagnosis. Because you see, the problem is then you get stuck into managing your decline. Mm. And it's like stealing your identity because your body was miraculously and wonderfully made. It was actually able, it was created to be able to heal itself. And what happens is you get into this rut and you accept that diagnosis. And words are powerful. And so you need to say, I'm not going to manage that decline anymore and use medicine to manage that decline. We're going to use infinity therapy and what God gave us to build our body, to be able to rebuild our body and have an increase. So there comes a time in your life, and Doug, this is where we need to get the word out. There comes a time where everyone needs to say enough. I'm going to stop managing my decline. And then what you're going to do is you're going to invest in the incline because the power that created you heals you. It's already encoded in there. It has the ability to do it. And there comes a time where we just have to say enough. 
And instead of allowing degeneration, which is the problem, to steal your life and your identity from you, you need to think about what it means to have your being, what it means to be who you were called to be, and how that affects your grandchildren, and how your health gives you the ability to play with your kids and your grandkids, because it becomes a legacy. God wants us to increase. He doesn't want us to decrease. And this is the best thing I've seen. I'm a doctor of chiropractic, but I've found that if we can regenerate before we operate, Doug, it's just one of the better choices. And what fascinates me is, unfortunately, out there with the listeners, it's your last choice instead of your first choice. And so it should be the first choice. So many people live on that diagnosis. Look, I have degenerating hip disease, so they're going to have to replace my hip. I've often said, Dr. Brunk, that there's a, a place between anti-inflammatories and Tylenol and so forth and major surgery. Right. And that place, in my thinking, would be to look into something like stem cells. But folks, you have to remember when we were kids, we used to take sand at the beach and we'd get the little sifter and then there was a seashell. You have to sift everything out on your own. You must look into stem cell therapy. I really believe that. Look, you had me at hello. You and stem cells had me at hello because of our friend. And then because of now my producer. And because right. of so many people have contacted me, thanks to seeing you, you had me. You need to know that that arthritis that is preventing you from holding, I have two grandkids, love my life. The pain, the deterioration that your doctor is telling you, ask your doctor if it's okay to just give this clinic a buzz and talk to them. You talk to a lot of people. I do, and what happens, and I had to see my son go through the pain of, see, my dad died of a heart attack. And you, know, you had this heart attack, and then they did a stress test, which why would you stress a heart that's already stressed? I, I don't understand that. For me, it's not logical. I'm not a, I'm not a cardiologist, but it wasn't right. logical. But what was painful, Doug, was to watch him, my son be at his graduation and not have his grandfather. So that's why to have that legacy, we need to get that word out and call our clinics to be able to talk to us and have a consultation we have clinics all over the country now yeah. that we've partnered with. And actually, we're, we're even looking for other partners because we need to expand this and get this word out So because it can transform lives through and just simplicity and truth. Thank you. That's important. If your chiropractor, your physician is interested in Infinity Cells, what you guys do, please pick up the phone and call Dr. Brunk. I love the way the IV, these immature cells, find the place of inflammation. Right. God bless you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. You bet. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my kitchen. My name is Abby, and today I'm going to show you how to make a very simple Coffin One everyday bread. We're going to start off with our dry ingredients first. I've got a big bowl here for mixing, and I'm going to start with almond flour. I've got some flax meal. I'm using arrowroot powder or arrowroot starch. Get all that out. A little bit of baking soda and some coarse sea salt. Now I'm going to mix all that together with a fork or a whisk just to try and aerate it a little bit and get all the clumps out of the almond flour. You want everything to be nice and mixed up before you add all your wet ingredients. Because the flax meal is gonna soak up all the moisture really quickly. It's gonna make it really hard to mix thoroughly if you don't do this beforehand. I'm gonna set that off to the side. And now I'm going to all my wet ingredients. Starting off with three eggs. I've got a little bit of avocado oil. I'm using avocado oil today, but if you wanna use olive oil or you can even use coconut oil if you wanted to, any of the Approved Kaufman oils is fine. Got a little bit of apple cider vinegar. And some plain yogurt. I'm using Greek yogurt because I like Greek yogurt. That's usually what I have on hand. But if you just got the regular plain yogurt, that's fine too. Just give that a nice mix. Make sure everything's nice and incorporated. Now, we're just going to simply add our wet ingredients to 
to the dry bowl. Go ahead and start stirring that up. Get out of here. You're going to see really quickly this gets really thick. This is a really thick dough, but I really enjoy it. It's really good, just everyday bread. If you want to make yourself some sandwiches, have some toast in the morning, it's really good to just have it on hand. Now I'm going to transfer all of this into an already greased little loaf pan that I have. I just greased it down with some, uh, I use coconut oil for this one. You're going to need to kind of spoon it in and then kind of press it out because it doesn't really change shape once you, once you make it into a ball. So you just got to kind of spoon it in and then take your time smoothing it out. Kind of smooth it out all the way to all the edges. So it bakes as evenly as possible. And now I'm going to go ahead and place this in the oven. Scrape all that off. Get that in there. Place this in the oven at 350 and it's gonna bake for about 30 minutes. All right guys, I'm back. My bread is done. I let it cool on a cooling rack for a good while so it's it's nice and easy to touch. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice into it and see how it came out. It's looking really good. You can see all the little bits of flaxseed in there. It smells really good. It's nice and airy and light. I'm just gonna have to go ahead and take a bite out of this. This is great. It's perfect. Genuinely perfect everyday bread. You can make little sandwiches out of this. You can eat it with some soup on a really cold night. And you can put some butter on it just eat it as a snack. It's really good. It's very dense. So you're probably not gonna end up eating a ton of it right away. But it's really good. And this is a very easy bread. You could add lots of flavors to it if you wanted to add like some everything bagel seasoning on top or some garlic salt or something like that. That'd be really good. You can find the entire recipe at knowthecause.com. None of these foods or these ingredients in here feed fungus, so everything is Kaufman 1. Well, please make this bread. Let me know how you like it and have a great day, guys. Okay, anybody ready for a sandwich? That's how good Abby is. Didn't that look good? Okay, folks, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Dr. Darcy Brunk. Both he and I agree, folks, that somewhere between NSAIDs or prescribed, you know, anti-inflammatories or Tylenol or curcumin and surgery to have a knee replaced or something like that, there may be a middle of the ground, something that immature stem cells can go in and find the site of inflammation and soreness and so forth and fix. Do call Dr. Brunk's office, even if it's just to talk. He is opening up centers all around the United States as we grow his presence. Then in the opening of the show, since two proteins and heart attacks, what's that all about? Well, like many things, I think it's all about fun. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time.